All right, let's hear from a few more people calling in via Discord. You can find the Discord at davidpackmancom slash discord. Let's go to Gabriel in Louisiana. Gabriel in Louisiana, welcome to the program. What's on your mind today? What can I do for you? Can you hear me right now? I can hear you. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, my question, well, first, uh, I voted for Trump in uh, 2020, so I'm a I'm a conservative and I've uh, changed my mind. I'm kind of like in the never Trumper camp. You'd like really? to say, yeah, you like to say the word uh, deprogramming often. I yeah. Think. How did you get deprogrammed? What turned you off from Trump? Uh, mainly, I think it was Sam Harris who uh, was primarily responsible for, quote unquote, like deprogramming me because hmm. and I th I'm trying to find a way to put this on speaker. Um, no, no, please. I no speaker. Speaker is terrible. We don't want speaker. Oh, OK, OK. What's the I'll biggest issue issues. on which you think you abandoned Trump? Was it the riots? Was it like what, what was it? I think uh, Sam Harris on one of his podcasts, he posed the question, um, what would have happened had Mike Pence um, not certified the election results? Like what would have transpired? Yep. And that kind of stumped me. I was like, you know what? I don't really know. It could have been bad, you know? So I think it was mainly the election where Sam Harris was kind of, you know, I always thought like, oh, maybe the election was rigged. Maybe it wasn't. Um, but when Sam posed that question, I'm like, okay, this issue is super important. And then when I dove into it, I mean, there, there's just no, it was a hundred percent, like, you know, Joe Biden won the election a hundred percent. So once I gathered that, I'm like, regardless of his policy, this makes him unelectable. You know, that was the thing that did it for you. Yeah. But I, I guess, uh, part of my question is something I'd like to emphasize here. So after my quote unquote deprogramming, I tried to find a home with the, uh, the Democratic Party. You know, naturally, once you say, OK, the Republicans are spineless, you look to the alternative. And I, I've, I've been kind of disappointed. And um, so, so one thing I, I want to, uh, I guess, I guess it's kind of a recommendation for your channel, but it, of course, you can do with it as you please. I kind of want you just to react to it and see if this is kind of a valid criticism of your channel. Okay. Um, so what made Sam Harris, uh, the person that could deprogram me is cause he routinely calls out, um, like the far left. And so it's kind of like a litmus test. So when he calls out the far left, then I can listen to him. Cause I'm like, okay, this guy isn't, um, you know, he's not like just a, he's not politically biased such that he can, uh, you see what I'm saying? So when he, when he calls out the left. Um, and he makes Let me see if I understand what you're saying, Gabriel. One of the things you like about Sam Harris and that it's a criticism of my channel is he calls out the left when the left goes wrong. But you don't feel that I do or that I do enough. Is that right? Uh, this is correct. Yeah. So because okay. I try to recommend my conservative friends to listen to your channel because I, I, I make my arguments and I say you should try to diversify your news rather than watching Fox. Check right. out David Pakman. And, and they they don't really stick around, but they will for Sam Harris because Sam Harris seems to. Um, well, I he can appreciate that. I mean, listen, here's what I'll tell you. I call out the, the the left when it goes wrong to the degree that I think it's relevant to the current political situation. And, and I'll explain to you what I mean by that. There are what things on the far left do I have a problem with o oppressive uses of identity politics, um, attempts to silence certain voices because they aren't intersectional enough. Um, I'm not a Marxist or a communist. So to the extent that people are advocating for Marxism or communism, I'm against that. I'm against when DEI goes too far, even though the reasons for DEI are well intentioned. In some individual cases, it can go too far. I call out the far left for not being um, aware enough or take se taking seriously enough anti-Semitism and often writing off anti-Semitism as Jews are just privileged white people and we don't have to worry about them. Uh, I call out the left when it goes too far in demanding cancellations when I don't think they are appropriate. So I call all those things out. But most of that wing of the left has very little power right now. There's no Marxists in the House or Senate. There's no communist in the House or Senate. DEI as a matter of of a federal law in the way that we cover government here is barely an issue. So what we're really up against right now is that more than half of the Republican Party 
is fine abandoning democracy and MAGA has some of the most dangerous anti-democratic instincts we've seen in, a, in generations. So do I have a problem with both of those things I just mentioned? Absolutely. One has way more power. One one in 2016, almost one in 2020, almost stole it after losing in 2020. So I'm going to focus my energy in proportion to how much power and influence I believe these groups have. Is that is that fair? Um, I, I really do appreciate that response because that checklist you made of when the left goes too far, like you satisfied a lot of my gripes. So mm. that was that was wonderful. But um, uh, that. I, that is fair, but what what I'll say that I don't think you're realizing is that when so if you're if you're starting with um, I'm not going to focus so much on when the left goes too far because the right is a bigger problem. I th I think a lot of that is is kind of wasted energy because when you're when you're focusing only on the right is a problem, like what's the point? Because you because well, the point the is the following. Think, Here's the I know where you're going with this, Gabriel. Here's the reason. Okay, if I focus, I, I want to try to improve the country. Okay. And part of the way we're going to improve the country is by more people who are sympathetic to my perspective voting. We only have 50, 60 percent voter turnout in this country. So if the show becomes about all of the ways the left is bad, I'm not really moving the needle in that it's it might as well be a right wing show if I'm just criticizing the left, because then I have to explain, well, you only criticize the left, but you're saying we should vote for Biden. That doesn't make sense. So the oh, reason this is well, well, hold on. The reason that I think this is the, the reason it matters, even though you're saying, well, listen, you're not going to convince the right wingers. Number one, I would say wrong. I hear from right wingers all the time who are convinced from by my show. But more importantly, more importantly, the point is that there are tens of millions of Americans who already agree with me on the facts, but they're not aware how dire the situation is. And them hearing from me how bad the situation is if these MAGA people get in power can motivate them not to change their mind, but just to choose to vote rather than to stay home. And that's where I believe the bulk of the people I'm trying to reach are. OK, that's no, that's a great I now understand. So you're kind of saying within the people that agree with me, I'm going to try to um, invigorate them to, to vote, like have them go vote. Yes. Uh, and that's going to have the best effect. Uh, no, that that's actually that's a really good answer. I haven't considered that, um, but but I would say rather than my suggestion wasn't to make it all about bashing the left, but if yep. it was like even fifteen percent coverage of where the left goes too far, I think you would bring in a giant. Not, I don't know how big, but a substantial amount of right wing voters. I really do think that you would, because that's kind of how Sam Harris operates. He's it's only about fifteen percent anti left, and the rest is. I, I would say kind of anti Trump, anti right. And, and to be and, clear, Gabriel, some of the instances that you're describing as the left going too far, I would even argue it's the left failing to actually be left. They're becoming authoritarian. They're becoming what I criticize about the right as well. But here's what I'm going to say. I, I think this is a perfectly fair critique. And to the extent that I uh, that people can suggest to me and you can do this, Gabriel, suggest to me the sorts of stories. Now, here's what I want to say. A story about, you know, here's some small business in Kansas that put up some <laughs> stupid left wing sign. There's no power behind that. So it's not like worthy of my coverage. Right. I, so I think the stories really need to be worthy of coverage and have some bigger picture or goal. They can't be, you know, a single dumb thing that happens on some campus in, in California isn't necessarily representative of a problem within the left that I feel inclined to speak out about. But send me the stories, Gabriel, and I'll make an effort to cover them if I think they're worthy of coverage. OK, no, that's uh, that's excellent. Um, so when you say send you the stories, what like info uh, at David Pacman.com info at David Pacman.com. OK, and uh, if I send you a story and it, and it just doesn't get covered, will I um I know I'm asking for a lot, but would I get like an explanation as to why it's insignificant? Or you only if you call. Only if you call in again and talk to me. We don't have the ability to respond to everybody who writes in. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, this was great. All right, Gabriel from Louisiana. Good conversation, I must say.